Hi everybody. Um, for today's art project, these are some of the things that you're going to need um, at home. So look around the house and see if you can find something to protect the table. I'm using a big piece of cardboard, but you can use a newspaper, a old plastic tablecloth, or any kind of covering that you can find. Most of the time here at the studio, we don't cover our tables at all, but since you're at home, find something to put underneath your painting. Uh, the next thing you are going to need is some heavy paper. We use watercolor paper that we get at Michael's and we never pay full price. We always use the coupon and this is our favorite and you just pull it off like this and this one comes with 30 sheets and um, that way you can use it all the time. We have um, two sides of the watercolor paper, of course. Uh, the rubber side is the side that we're going to use, and the smoother side is the side we're not going to use. You're going to need a pencil. Um, I like the mechanical pencil, but you could use regular pencil, either one of those. You're going to need an eraser, a permanent marker. I like Sharpies. This is the super, super extra fine, but you could do, you know, the thicker one. It doesn't matter. And then some watercolor paints. Uh, these are the semi-moist watercolor paints that are more vibrant. Sometimes they get a little bit sticky if you don't use enough water, um, but I like these. But any kind of watercolor paints is going to be good. For the paintbrush, I have a little bit of a thicker one and a thinner one. Um, I like the thinner for the small spots, of course, and the thicker for the big spots. So if you have two, that's great. If you only have one, that's okay. And then um, some water in an old uh, container, something that you're gonna throw out. You don't wanna use your good dishes. And then we need to have a uh, old towel or old wash rag or some paper towels. And then we're gonna be set and ready to go, okay? Okay, we're gonna start drawing our panda using shapes. And I'm gonna draw kinda dark so you can see, but I recommend you draw really light. So his head is pretty big and I am going to draw an oval. Then they have pretty small ears and I'm going to put an oval ear here and another oval ear here. Then they have a muzzle or a nose whatever area and I am going to include that um, right, kind of low. So you kind of start with an ovally shape like that. And then they have a little line that kind of comes down for their lips. Kind of comes down like this and then down like that. And then that creates kind of a little point down at the bottom of his nose. Their eyes are more than halfway down on their head and they have big ovals at a diagonal. So this one goes this way and this one goes the other way. Those are not their eyes. Those are actually the black circles of their eyes. Their eyes are in here, like this little circle, little tiny football shapes, ovals with points. Pandas have a huge body, so bring a line down to the back. We're not going to be able to fit our whole panda on here. Down like this. And on this side, we're just going to bring part of his body over here. And maybe a little bit like that. Pandas love bamboo. So we're going to put in a little bit of bamboo. Maybe a a line here and then we'll put let's go all the way up and then we just put on some bamboo leaves keep it simple however you draw is cool I'm just making recommendations but you can make it however you want if you want to change it up and make it different go for it and I'm gonna put now that I have that leaf on there I'm just gonna put maybe make me pencil a little bit longer I'm gonna put a uh, one little arm over here just like this, like he's grabbing it. You don't even see the whole thing. If you draw yours differently, that's even better. This is just, I just give ideas. Let's put a couple more areas of bamboo. 
Okay, perfect. Okay, now we're on to outlining our drawing. And you'll need a permanent marker for this. I like Sharpies, but any kind of permanent marker will work. This one's the super fine tip, but you can use the thicker tip if you like. And always make sure that you put your cap on the back so that you don't lose it. And when I outline, you can change your lines at this time. So I kind of go a little bit messy. And because the panda has some fur, and I like those natural lines, and I go pretty fast. I'm just going to come along here and go along down, come back up. If you want to make your bamboo even thicker, you can double up your lines, make your leaves go around everything. Hopefully you drew a little lighter than I did so that your lines will come off, your pencil lines will come off better than mine will. I'm just going to go all the way around. Bring it up around our nose, around the black parts of your eyes. And remember, you don't have to be right on the lines with this. Now, for your eyes, I recommend that you go ahead, because when we paint, it's going to be kind of hard to paint this little tiny eye in here. So what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color this eye all the way in, except I'm going to leave a little white spot. So you know that little eye is in there. And that's called our sparkle. Everybody has a sparkle. And that's because their eyes are wet. So I'm going to go ahead and just color this whole eye in, but I don't need the sparkle. If you color your sparkle in, don't worry about it. Or if one eye is bigger than the other, like mine are, don't worry about that either. As soon as we start worrying, then we're going to stop doing art, so... I say all the time that we don't want to have perfectionist paralysis because as soon as we want to be per perfect at something, there goes that anxiety level, goes all up, and then we think we have to be perfect at everything. And that's the beauty of art. You can change it and make it how you want it to be. So I have his little paw here, and I kind of did a crazy mess up here where I wanted the paw on top, and then I have his line there. And that's okay, too. So if you do something like that, don't worry about it. So I'm going to put my cap. Always snap your cap back together. I say it's like an astronaut without his helmet. He's going to die. I've got an eraser. Look, I've got some glitter stuck on here. One of the kids wrote an A on there, but it works fine. Big strokes. Look, I erased his chin, so I'm going to put that chin back on. Okay? And then we're going to get ready for paint. What we're going to do is we're going to put some water on our watercolors because that's the magic ingredient. So I'm going to put a little dab of water on my blue. You might have a different blue. doesn't matter. On the green. My green might be different. The yellow. Some on there. And let's put some on the black. I don't have any brown in my set, but if you have some brown in your set, you can use brown. Um, these are semi-moist watercolors, which just means that they never really dry out. And so the colors will be a little more vibrant, although sometimes more sticky. Yours might take a little more going around in a circle. There's all different kinds. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our background, our sky. So very carefully, what I like to do is I like to go all the way around my bear. And if you add water, then you won't get the streaks that so often happen with watercolor. Sometimes I'll even paint with water the whole thing first. But just be generous with the water. See how that just kind of went right in there? That's okay if you get it in a spot that you don't want it to be in. So I just kind of go around and add water, especially in these tricky areas, these little small areas. You want to add some, see how that just kind of follows the water right in there. And normally we go light to dark, but I'm going to do my sky first because the leaves can go over the sky, but not the other way around. So that's it for our sky. I just like it being real loose. Watercolors are supposed to be loose. Acrylic paint is a little more tight. Now you have to watch it because you've got these wet areas and if I start to go into those wet areas without drying them, then what's gonna happen is they're just gonna run together with when I start painting 
anything else like my um, greenery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the towel and just straight up and down and then see how it got the blue on there. Now i got to move it to a new spot. I'm just going to dab like this. Move it to a new spot. Dab. You can use paper towel for this. Whatever you want. Okay, now I'm just going to grab my brush again. And we're going to go in with some yellow, and because yellow mixed with blue makes green, that's going to be perfect because the yellow is going to be the base coat of our leaves. So I'm just going to put some yellow in the middle. Yellow. Yellow. It's okay if it kind of wanders. Don't worry about it wandering. You'll see your paper. See how this is curling here? Some artists will take their watercolor paper and tape it down or wet it on the other side. See how I got a little dot of yellow there? I'm not even going to worry about that. And I'm just going to go right along here, put a little yellow on my stem. Right down here. Now this is where your fine motor skills come in. See how I'm holding that brush straight up and down? You want to use the tip as best you can. If you're smashing your brush like this, you make a spot smashing it, that means you're using too much pressure and your brush will become an ugly brush what we call an ugly brush here at the studio. We have happy brushes and sad brushes. See how it's separating there? Sometimes you can even take your finger and get it back together just like that. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of green and I'm just going to add, try to get this brush back to pointing, I'm just going to add a little bit of green just right around here. Sometimes it gets really powerful. See how it's really powerful? It's a little darker than I would like. That's okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use that as my palette. I'll just go back there and pick up color from there and then that way it's all set and ready to go. I want kind of a green, yellow green loose look and it should be pretty good. And go around here, pick up some from over there. See I've got this crazy puddle here because the paper is curled. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to come right back over there and fix that wash out my brush, look for a clean spot on my wash rag, and I'm just going to go down like that, down like that, down, down. Now down here in this zone I'm not so concerned because my bear, my next thing is my black, and the black is going to be the most color, most powerful color, and black goes over everything, so we're good to go. Okay, this guy's going to be done in no time at all. Now, I like to kind of work from the center out on this because my sky is still drying a little bit. And I can always add more. And that's coming out really nice and dark. Really nice and dark. Because I let that black kind of soak in. And I, my brush is a little messed up on the ends here. So that's okay. I like kind of having that furry look. So I'm just gonna go like that right around his eyes there. And I go, I've got one dip on here and it's going for days, so that's nice. Go around this way, around his eye, go so carefully. If you go over his eyes, don't worry. He has a um, black eyes, it's hard to see them, so you can just put a little white dot later. So I got his eyes going. I'm going to make my clean my brush off a little bit for his nose because I want that to get it kind of pointy because the nose is a little nerve-wracking. So I do want to get it just right in here. A little bit more water. And I'm just going to go around like this. Line it up best you can. If it goes crazy, just make his nose bigger. There's no way to do it wrong. Okay. Ear time. I'm going to kind of go up with an upward stroke, just kind of like this, just to kind of give him a little bit of a fuzzy look up here on his ears. And if you want to leave some white spots, that'd be cute. You can kind of make it up. We use the panda as inspiration for what we're doing, but you can have it however you want it to be. So I just kind of go on like this. Remember, you don't want your brush to get ugly though. Okay, now we get to go in for this whole section here. And I'm already thinking I gotta be careful going around my bamboo and right here where my arm is. 
So I'm gonna get a little more water. I'm gonna start way up here. And I'm just gonna kinda bring his hair down, kinda a little crazy here. And I think what to make his arms show up, what I can do, even though you know sometimes it doesn't show up, I'm just gonna make it watery right there. And around my <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit I'm gonna put a little safety zone of water right around my bamboo just to make it so that it doesn't go in that zone. Okay, and then I can get back in here, get some more water. Just kind of calm down real fast. I did have that extra line there. I kind of went over it. And just right in here a little bit more careful. Go in the direction that you think the fur is going. So, if you think the fur is going, you know, fur on a, on a panda bear is not going in circles. That's more of a, I don't know, a sheep or something. So I'm just gonna try and get his hair to go down or up, kind of this way. And getting real close to his chin, coming out this way. And let me just tell you, there's a really great uh, website for the World Wildlife Fund. And it has all the information about all the threatened species. The um, panda is on there, the giant panda from China. And it's really cool, they've got a great website that you can learn all kinds of fun facts about all the animals, the geography, what's affecting their habitats, why they're vulnerable or endangered, and what what we're doing to, what are we as humans doing to create these problems for these beautiful animals? So how are we gonna fix it? And it's kind of cool because the World Wildlife Foundation has all these ideas and things that we can do as humans to make it better for the animals that we share this planet with. So you wanna think about those things, you know, as we go about in our everyday life. Now here, I've got this whole area where his little arm is going over there, and I'm not even gonna worry about it being all perfect. Now when it dries, my friends, what I think you should do, not now, but when it dries, I think you should sign your name in pencil, right here, or maybe over here. Uh, don't write it real big across the top, or maybe write your name, um, you can write your name on the back, but it's more professional that you sign your name on the front, small, and then uh, write the year, at least the year, 2020. So thanks for painting a panda with us, um, and then we'll do another animal another time.